Hello students, here I am again to welcome you to English language classroom. Session 4. As usual, let us begin with CELQ. I am giving you three questions today. The first one is related to parts of speech. Read the question. The following words are all to do with qualities a good listener may have. You know that to learn a language, the first skill all of us should develop is listening. And being a good, good listener is always good. Question is, can you provide the related adjectives or nouns? The first line, you can see two nouns, alertness and restraint. I have to write the adjective forms of these words. In the second line, you see adjectives, two adjectives, attentive and respectful. You have to write the noun form of these two words. Now, use the second question B is use the correct form of lie or lay to fill up the blank. I wanted to do a little bit of research here to understand the difference. The first one is every afternoon I dash down after the hectic work in my house. Next question is he had dashed to his friends many times before he was caught. Next question is the third one. The police ordered the criminals to dash down the weapons. weapons. Last question is, the government has dashed down the rules to be followed right in the beginning. Okay, let us go to question C. Guess the meanings of the words underlined below. First one is, when he said this, the real reason for his visit struck me. The word underlined is struck. The second one is, He's an expert in the culture of mushrooms. The word underlined is culture. So you have to understand the contextual meaning of these words, struck and culture, and write it. I'm giving the answer in the last slide. You can view that and check whether your answers are right or not. Now let us go to the main segment. The main segment, in the main segment, today we are going to discuss question 3, A and B. You know that they are notice writing and email writing. In this slide, you can see the format of notice writing. First, you have to write a catchy title. The title should be creative and it should be related to the event. Remember to use only English words. You should not use regional language here. That is one mark. Next, you have to write name of the event. That is one mark. Next one is day and date. 15 days in advance, you must write it. Along with date and date, you must write month and year also. Remember DDMY. It carries half mark. Next is time of the event. For example, if you are starting the program at 9 o'clock in the morning, you have to write 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 12 noon. It carries half mark. Next is venue where you are going to conduct the program. From smaller area to bigger area. That means smaller means, for example, you are going to conduct the program in your school auditorium. You have to mention the name of the school auditorium. Bigger area is the name of your school. Half plus half is equal to one mark. Then comes target audience. That is, who all can participate in this competition. For example, if you are conducting poetry writing competition, you can write uh, the target audience. The students of class 9 and 10 are eligible to participate in this competition. 
And remember, sentence should be grammatically correct and there should not be any spelling error here. Otherwise, you will, you will get less marks. You will not score marks here. Carries one mark. Now, last is name and designation. Though it doesn't carry marks, you must write it. Total marks is five. Now, let us move to email writing format. First is two email ID, which carries half mark. Then CC, that is a copy of this you have to send. For example, if you are sending, uh, you are in, in order to invite a neighboring school principal for poetry writing competition, then you are sending the two email, you must write two email ID to the neighboring school principal. And then copy should be sent to your school's principal. It is your duty. Though it doesn't carry mark, you must write. Next is subject. As you write in the formal letter, you have to write the subject in short, which carries half mark. Then next is salutation. Dear sir or dear madam. Ends with a comma. And it carries half mark. Now let us move to the body of the email. First is opening sentence. That is, you write the purpose of writing this email, right? It carries half mark. Then, the content part, you must write all the details that you have written in the notice. That is, starting from the creative title, name of the event, then day, date, venue, target audience, everything you must write in a paragraph form. It carries two marks. In closing sentence, carries half mark. The next is complimentary ending, that is thanking you, comma, and subscription and name, your full name. Subscription is yours truly and or yours faithfully, which ends with a comma. Y should be in block capital and there should not be any spelling error here when you write truly or faithfully. Together, it carries half mark, that is subscription and full name. With your name should be initial or surname. Hope you understood the format of both notice and email writing. Now, let us discuss these questions. Your school is hosting an inter-school quiz competition. Write out a notice to be displayed in your school in your school, giving all details for the event. So the name of the event is Inter-School Quiz Competition. Now, the second question is, write an email to the principal of a neighboring school requesting him or her to send a team of three members to participate in the quiz competition. Here you are writing the email to the neighboring school's principal. And what are you going to request? To send a team of three members to participate in the quiz competition. So you must include this in the content. This is from 2019 question paper. Let's see how to write it. Now the name, the creative title or catchy title is quiz if you can. You can write question hour or quiz time, but it should be well related to the event. The name of the event is inter-school quiz competition. Now, if you're naming the event, for example, you can write Cambridge inter-school quiz competition. That's also fine. Then, yes, day, date, month, and year. Friday, 22nd May, 2020. Next is time. 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Then comes the venue, Louisa Manohari Auditorium, comma, the new Cambridge English School. The smaller area is Louisa Manohari Auditorium. The bigger area is the new Cambridge English School. Next is target audience. 
students of class 9 and 10 are eligible to participate. Last, you have to write your name, full name, and the designation, Shraddha V, Cultural Secretary. Okay, now let's see how to write email, a model email writing. You are writing this email, you are sending this mail to the neighboring school's principal, principalbluebells at gmail.com. Copy to be sent to your school, principal, principal, tnces, gmail.com. Now, how to write the subject? As you write in the formal letter, request to send participants for inter-school quiz competition. You must mention the name of the event here. Next is salutation. Dear madam or dear sir. Now, in the body of the email, you have to write first the opening sentence. For example, our school is organizing an inter-school quiz competition. Or our a school is hosting an inter-school quiz competition. Then you have to include all details that you have written in the notice. If, for example, you have to write Visitica, inter-school quiz competition, then the day, date, month, year, time, then venue, then the target audience. Everything you must include here in the paragraph form. Last is closing sentence. That is, we look forward for your participation or waiting for your participation. Then, as you write in the formal letter, you have to write thanking you, yours truly, Shraddha V, Cultural Secretary. Now, you are ready to write a notice and an email. These questions you have to write yourself. This is assignment number eight because I have already given seven assignments so far. So now this is notice and email. Your school is hosting a science fair. Write a notice for your school informing them of the event. An email is write an email to the principal of a neighboring school informing him or her of the event and requesting him or her to send a team of young scientists. I want you to write it as soon as possible and submit when the school reopens. Now, today I'm going to start a new segment that is transformation of sentences. This is lesson one. What is meant by transformation of sentences? It means changing or converting the words or form of a sentence without changing its meaning. Without altering the meaning, you have to change the form of a sentence. Example, a simple sentence containing the adverb to can be transformed into a complex sentence containing so that with no difference in meaning. You know that simple sentence means a sentence which has got one subject and a finite verb. A complex sentence means a sentence which has got one main clause and one or more subordinating clauses. Now, one rule is if the adverb to is followed by an adjective and then by a verb in the infinitive mode, we expand the sentence into two clauses. The first containing so and the second beginning with that. Look at this example. The coronavirus is too dangerous for people to go out without a mask. Your the adverb to is followed by adverb to is followed by the adjective dangerous and which is the verb here go is the verb it is in infinitive mode to infinitive to go now how to change this transform this using so that the coronavirus is so dangerous that people cannot go out without a mask 
Now remember the sentence is in present tense. Now let us focus on the construction. So that and to do. How to replace them. So that expresses cause and effect. For example, the coronavirus is so dangerous. The cause is that and effect is people cannot go out without a mask. Now, two, two, it has got a negative sense and it means more than is necessary or desirable. Now, there is one rule when we, we should be careful while changing this, transforming this. If the original sentence contains no negative word, the subordinate clause becomes negative. See, look here. Child is very short. He cannot reach the balloon. Here, the original sentence is the child is so short that he cannot reach the balloon. When we use so that here, the main clause is the child is so short and that he cannot reach the balloon is the subordinating clause. Here we have used negative. This has got negative word, not. Then how to change this into another form of sentence using to do. Child is too short to reach the balloon. Now, next rule is that if the sentence contains a negative word, the subordinate clause becomes positive. He is too cowardly not to bend. That means that he's a very he's a coward. Coward means not brave. And he will bend. He's so cowardly that he will bend. So you cannot write that he's so cowardly that he will not bend. All right. Now let us see some examples from the ICSC board paper. This is from 2011. The thief ran so fast that the police could not catch him. The sentence is in past tense. Now we have to use two here. The thief ran too fast for the police to catch him. Next is Megha is too tall to crawl under the table. You have to use so that here. Megha is so tall that she cannot crawl under the table. This is from 2009. Now, look at the next example. This is a bit tricky question which came in 2018. Anil is too fast runner to come first in the race. Here, what does it mean? Anil is a very fast runner and you predict that he is going to win the race. Or there's a high probability that he is, he will win the race. So the answer accepted or answers accepted are these ones. Anil is so fast a runner that he cannot fail to come first in the race or he has to come first in the race or he will or is sure to or is certain to or will surely come first in the race. There is also another option. Anil is so fast a runner that he cannot but come first in the race. Hope you understood the construction so that and to do. I'm going to attach an assignment sheet with this uh, related to so that and to do construction. I want all of you to do it um, and submit it when the school reopens. Now, in, in this slide, you can see the answers for the quiz question. The first question was, you are asked to write the adjective form of alertness. The adjective is alert. And next is the noun form of atten attentive. The noun form is attentiveness or attention. Both are acceptable. Then third one is the adjective form of restraint. Noun is R-E-S-T-R-A-I-N-T. 
But adjective, the spelling is different. R-E-S-T-R-A-I-N-E-D. -E Fourth one is the noun form of respectful. It is respect. Then question B is every afternoon I lie down after the hectic work in my house. Second one is he had lied to his friends many times before he was caught. Third one is the police ordered the criminals to lay down the weapons. Fourth one, the government has laid down the rules to be followed right in the beginning. Now question C, when he said this, the real reason for his visit struck me. That means that came suddenly to, the real reason for his visit came suddenly to me. Second one was, he's an expert in the culture of mushrooms. Here, culture means growing. He's an expert in the growing of mushrooms. So children, this is the end of this session. Write the assignment soon so that it will not get piled up. Remember, time is so fast that you cannot catch it. You heard the sentence? Now, I'll repeat. Time is so fast that you cannot catch it. Replace this sentence with two. All right. Thank you. God bless all of you.